morning. Thank you, Brother Jesse. Brother Jesse's got some allergy stuff, so that's why he wasn't greeting this morning. So we recruited him to play this morning while we, everybody was coming in. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, where it be biological mothers or foster mothers or just mothers in, in the spirit and in love. We welcome you here this morning. We ha are going to get started with He is Here, and then we have a video to watch before our announcement. So let's go. Go ahead. our announcements this morning good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of y'all um, I just want to share something that God doesn't speak to me audibly that often if if any but he does impress things upon me and, and I just want to say something right off the bat we we welcome you to the service we welcome you to come and worship with us and we call this a worship service, but Jesus kind of got on to the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests, and he said, it's written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. It is that. It is a house of worship. It is a house of prayer, but uh, it's just been within the last few years that I've, I've come to understand that our praying is a spiritual form of our worship. But vice versa, our worship is also a pleasing aroma before the Lord. So I welcome you this morning in song, in scripture reading, in, in prayer. Let's worship the Lord because it is found to be pleasing in his sight. Uh, from an announcement standpoint, uh, you have your, your bulletins there and they uh, everything's uh, out before you. Uh, one of the new, we talked about Vacation Bible School. It is coming up on the 12th through the 16th of June. But the meeting time has been set for this month. It's May the 21st at 4.30. Uh, we are now asking for donations of small bottles of water, cardboard boxes, and they can be left in the church kitchen in here. Now, I was gently reminded... Uh, on several occasions that I misspoke several weeks ago and I was talking about there's a place for men at Bible school and I encouraged you just to, to show up and that you'd be given a place to work and I'm told that's not the right way to say it. Uh, they would love for you to sign up. You don't have to sign up for anything in particular. You'll be given something to do but don't just show up because uh, apparently that's not real good for the powers that be that are running this thing. Uh, it 
causes confusion. So I apologize if you misunderstood me, but you don't have to have any real expertise. Uh, all of us male type people can be useful in, Sunday, in a Bible school. So, uh, and there are people who will tell us what to do and how to do it. So just come. <laughs> but put your name on the book, please. On, on the, uh, don't forget we talked about the request for us to be a participant either corporately or individually in the Shepherd Center. There's a list, a sign-up sheet back here. If there's some interest, just put your name on there, and that will determine whether we want to do this corporately as a church, depending on how much uh, interest and desire for involvement that we would have. Um, I want to remind the deacons we will have a short meeting right after services today and learned about this Wednesday night, and I'm super, super excited about it. Hillary has done a lot of work. Uh, there is an app that can be downloaded for free. The instructions of how to download the app and how to use it are out here in the, uh, what do we call that place, coffee drinking area. Any, anyway, but it will be more than just like a Facebook page. It is an app that we can have notifications set up. Anything that's going on within the church, any needs, any prayer requests, any prayers of praise, any activities will all be available on that app. You can actually uh, put stuff into the app to let us know that there needs to be something put onto the prayer list, but I think it's going to be a very, very good tool for, uh, for communication uh, both to and from. So uh, I, 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 I'm not sure how long before it, it's operational, or is it operational, Hillary? It is already operational, and if you have any input or some things that we would like to add to that, our, our prayer list, our, our, all of these announcements, all this stuff can be on, on the, found on the app. So uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to look it up and, and download it. Uh, I do want to say one other thing. I, it's bad enough when God impresses me to say one thing, but he's, he's actually... Uh, I just want to say something to the mothers. It's, it's kind of a shout out. Uh, this, this world would not be what it is without mothers. Uh, we know the, the saying, God doesn't ever create any junk and he doesn't make any mistakes, but I think it goes further than that with, with mothers. Uh, he, God, God pretty much showed out when he made woman. And, and I really mean that. Uh, us men, we, we sometimes want to pooch our chest out and we, we say, well, we're the uh, scriptural, biblical, we are the, the, the men that wear the pants in the family and we're the spiritual leaders of the household. And we are. Uh, that brings with it a whole lot of responsibility. But we would not be what we can be without the mothers and, and women in, in our lives. And uh, George and I talk about and joke and kid about white perch, all of them being females. Well, I don't want us men to think that any high, more highly of ourselves than we should because uh, I want to I say women are created with... Uh, Y'all are y'all are a step above above us. Y'all are created with the complexity to to do things and to accomplish things that men just weren't given, and and there's there's a reason for that. But uh, kind of like white perch, uh, us men can't think too much of ourselves because there's some things that only God can understand what y'all do and why you do it. But He created you to be able to do those things. So I just want to say, the world would not be what it is. We could not operate without you. Keep on doing what God's created you to do, and that's our prayer, which I will, I will lead us in prayer in a minute, but uh, that you, you use your God-given gifts because us men-type folks, we don't have them. Uh, so uh, is there any other announcements that I did not mention? Okay. Join me in a word of prayer, and then we're going to have some uh, fellowship. Brother Jesse will give you a fist, fist pump. He doesn't want to give you any of his allergies or whatever he's got. So uh, y'all bow with me. Heavenly Father, we, 
we pause before your throne this morning. It is a throne of grace and of mercy. Lord, we pray that all that we say and do through song, through prayer, through our worship, Lord, will be found to be pleasing to you, a fragrant aroma in your presence. Bless our activities this morning. Bless the word as it's opened. And Lord, especially thank you for the women that you've put into our lives and for the creation that you, Lord, have worked on to allow them to be able to do and be what you've created them for. I pray for strength for each, each, uh, each mother that's here. I pray especially for godly wisdom that they might help lead and guide through instructions and wisdom that you have granted them because uh, we need that leadership. Uh, we call you Heavenly Father, and rightly so. But Lord, what characteristics I see in the women and the mothers that I know, uh, they really resemble you a lot more than, than us fathers sometimes. Thank you for showing us unconditional, Lord, and uh, selfless love through our mothers and the women in our lives. Bless us now, as only you can, that we might be a blessing to others. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. this morning with faith of our mothers it is not in our hymnal though so we had a handout did everybody get one if you didn't get one do we have extras if you did not get one raise your hand the guys will come bring you one while they're doing that um, I don't know I just want to say what a great day what a great day I know a lot of us have lost our mothers and that's hard but God is good and faithful, and we have lots of spiritual mothers, so thank you to all of you here who have been a spiritual mother in my life. I appreciate you very much.
heaven, how great thou art. We will sing the first, third, and last verse. mornings 527 I know whom I have believed we'll sing the first second and last verse of this one
forward, please. For the love of would you pray? ever heard the song Beulah Land then you know the person that wrote this song his name is Squire Parsons and he has written some of the most beautiful hymns gospel music Mac I'm going to slow that down just a little bit okay I haven't sang this song in a long time. <laughs> I used to sing this for my mama. This is called Hello Mama. Hello, Mama. I just called to tell you all those prayers you prayed for me. They were not in vain. Something happened. Tonight while traveling down a country road I thought you should be the first to know That I am not the same All those dreary days are over now Those sleepless Nights are past All those prayers that you Have prayed so long They're answered now at last 
Cause I'm not, not the boy I used to be Mama, you can sleep tonight For I found Jesus Now everything's alright I remember How every night before you'd go to sleep Mama, you'd pray the Lord my soul to keep I might find the way And Mama For all that loneliness and all those wasted years Mama, your prayers kept ringing in my ears Every night and day All those dreary days Are over now Those sleepless nights are past All those prayers that you Have prayed so long They're answered now at last Oh, I'm not, not the boy I used to be Mama, you can sleep tonight For I found Jesus Now everything's alright Now I found Jesus Now everything's all right. We're so glad you're here today. studying through the Gospel of John. You're still not there. Maybe I went the wrong way with that thing. Maybe the battery's dead. Am I there now? Okay. I was probably on the whole time then. Y'all heard me back there humming. <laughs> Technology. John chapter 1. Did I say 25? I said 34, didn't I? I'm sorry. Yeah, I said 25, but I, I had told uh, someone else earlier, 34. John 1, 34. I'm, pardon me. I got all emotional with that song. <laughs> and we've been talking about John the Baptist and... Christ's baptism, last week we, we looked at why would Jesus need to be baptized. Now let me just recap quickly. I don't know if you'd ever thought about that, but I had. Because John the Baptist, when you read this text, you, you easily see that he was baptizing those who had come being baptized in water, the running water of the Jordan River, that was a, an intentional thing. When we looked at all the traditions, the running water was the first, prior, the first choice 
uh, of, of the Jewish people, if they were going to do that cleansing, we went all the way back to Exodus and we saw how that in the temple there was a, a place built for their cleansing. Now, the scribes and Pharisees that came to, to confront John the Baptist asked him why he was baptizing because in their mind, Anything to do with that kind of thing had to do with some kind of, of a ritualistic purification. Because uh, all of the priests had to be cleansed and physically cleansed because they would not die if they went before God because God was all about you smelling good and being clean. Now that was a picture of what was about to come. And so... Still today, you'll find people that hang to those things, and there's nothing wrong with smelling good. Everybody ought to use a bar of dial. I mean, that's important. You know, Mama used to always say, uh, water and soap's real inexpensive, so everybody ought to use that stuff. And she was trying to tell me as a kid that that's what I needed to do. So <laughs> that's important. Mamas are good about that. But it wasn't everything because it was the foreshadowing of what was about to come and now John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus Christ, who actually happened to be his cousin, he was foreshadowing, he was talking about the Messiah was here, and so now he was doing something that what had been shown in the Old Testament ritual, he was actually baptizing people in the Jordan River, immersing them, you know, I'm not criticizing anybody else. That's just that, that's what we do as Baptists. We, we immerse people because he was immersing them in the Jordan River, not to cleanse their sins, but because of the cleansing of their sins, because they had confessed their sins as a Jew. They had confessed and got right with God as a Jew because his message was to the Jews. And again, you... A lot of people get after me for being so dispensational, but that's exactly what, the way the Bible is laid out. Because you got to be careful what you use and apply. Remember we said here recently that in the uh, interpretation must always precede application. If you read a verse of Scripture, you have to get the proper interpretation before you can accurately and correctly apply that to your life. Now many things are in principle, in the principle, you know, thou shalt not this and that, those principles carry on. But some of these things in practice, we have to be careful how we apply those things because much of that may have been in practice meant for the Jews, okay? So here, now do we still baptize? Yes, we do, but many people take that, and I'm, I'm going to just take for a moment before I move on. Many people take that because they got in the water, uh, that meant they were getting cleansed by the water, and that's not, what the, that's not what the text was saying, okay? And we went over to Matthew, and we saw the detail where he kind of focused in a little bit closer and got into the detail of that. And even John the Baptist said, well, why are you coming to me? Because you're the, you're the Messiah. <laughs> you need to be baptizing me. And Jesus said, because we're doing this to fulfill Scripture. So Jesus didn't need to have his sins washed away. He didn't need to repent. He was the God-man, okay, that hypostatic union that we've talked about between being all God and all man all at the same time. And that's about the best I can explain it to you because that's something we have to take by faith. Okay, now I'm hurrying through this, but I want to get us to where we were so that we can refresh our minds. So now, J John says, here is the one that we've been talking about. And he says in verse th 34, and I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. And that's what really John has been saying from verse 1. He is the Son of God. He is the eternal Son of God. And you say, well, you, man, you said that about a million times, and I'm going to say it a million more, because today they want to make Him everything in the world but the Son of God. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ was not just a man that got filled with God at that Jordan River, but I'm telling you, He was God before He was put in the womb of Mary. And that's a fact. 
Now that's something you, people can say, well, you're crazy. Well, it's no crazier than all the stuff Carl Sagan used to talk about the billions and billions of years and all the, you know, there's still people today uh, that may think we're just grown-up germs. That all you are in the womb is just a, a, a set of, of tissues and things like that. Listen, my friend, no, we were intricately made. We are created by God, and we're going to see that a little bit more here as we go forward. John says, I have seen and I bore witness that this is the Son of God. Now, from there, let's go briefly to uh, Luke chapter 2. I want you to see something in the Gospel of Luke. Did I say 2? I'm sorry, chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. <clears throat> The Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 21. And I like seeing, I like helping people see all of these uh, Gospels come together on this. In verse 21, he says, Now it came about when all the people were baptized that Jesus also was baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened up. Look at verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And somebody has mentioned that this is the only time that we find where the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are all like manifested in one place. Because the voice of heaven coming from, 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 from heaven, this is my Son. And that's what he says. Thou art my beloved Son. In thee I am well pleased. But we see also, so we see the Father speaking from heaven, and we see the Son there in the Jordan River being baptized, and we see bodily, like a dove, lighting the Holy Spirit lighting upon him. Man, that's a beautiful picture. Now you get to stirring around about that while you're fishing. I'll tell you right now, you'll be scaring off all the fish because you'll start, whoa, man, you just start having one of them Baptocostal spells. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, now look at verse 23. And when he began his ministry, Jesus himself was about 30 years of age, being, now mine said supposedly, and I'm not real fond of that term, but that's the translation they made here. What this literally be, being supposedly the son of Joseph, the son of Eli. Now the literal there is more like this, as it was being thought. So in other words, literally the translation says he was the son of Joseph, the son of Eli, as everyone assumed or as they thought, okay? So that was the case, but was it the case? Joseph was his earthly father in the sense of raising him. But I want to take you one more step before we go back to Genesis. And then we're going to talk about mamas. But I want you to see Matthew. I'm sorry to make you turn a lot, but you're going to do that with me. I'm just that way. I'm, I'm just going to make you turn. I want you to see the scripture. I don't want you just to hear what I have to say. I want you to see it from God's word. And you can write it down if you don't have your Bible with you. You may be looking on your phone, that's fine. You make a note or something like that or highlight it. Y'all may be more techy than I am. I'm, I can't do all that stuff because I'll lose it. <clears throat> but look what he said. Matthew, and people said, man, I read this and it's just so boring because it's the genealogy. That's what this was all about. Matthew was writing because he was writing to the Jews. And they needed to see the genealogy here. And it's important because that's a record. Now look what he says, and I'm not going to read the first uh, 15 verses. You'll do that later, and some of these you're not going to be able to. I'll be like one old preacher. He'd come to a name, one of those names in the Bible he couldn't pronounce. He'd stop and talk for a minute and jump in after. You know, that's a good way to do that if you can't pronounce it. Okay. You know. <clears throat> but anyway, in verse 16, I want you to see this one little point right here. We said, John says, this is the Son of God. I've, I've borne witness, and I have seen this. And Luke says that he was, as people suppose, the son of Joseph, the son of Eli. So look at what Matthew says, and this will nail the thing down for you. And to Jacob, in verse 16, was born Joseph, 
the husband of Mary. When you look at all of these others, so-and-so begat this one and so-and-so begat that one. And when it gets to Jesus, <laughs> interestingly enough, it's, and this is, there's a reason for this. Because Joseph was not his biological father. The Holy Spirit was the one that placed him in Mary's womb. Amen. I'm going to stand on that until the day I check out. Till I kick that bucket. And to Jacob was born Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So there is, scientists don't like the word proof, but there it is. There's evidence of it. There's right there. The Bible even says, very plainly, that Joseph was not his biological father. I can imagine... I, I was brought to attention this week about Mary pondering the things of Jesus in her heart. I can't even really wrap my mind around what Mary, what a blessed thing for her, but yet what a challenge for her. And in their society, it was, it was very important for them, for a mother to have children. It was just very important because you were considered something wasn't just right, you know, if you didn't have children. And that, that was pretty judgmental, but yet that's the way their society was. And for her to have Jesus and why he picked her. People say, why did he pick her? Because she was perfect. No, she wasn't perfect. She was just a, a beautiful, precious young lady. And I'm sure she was a good person. But God picked her because God picked her. And we'll find that out one of these days when we get to heaven. And you can ask him that. I have no idea. But God did. He picked her to be the mother of Jesus. And someone else has said that sometimes the Catholic folks make a great more of Mary than the Baptist people do. And maybe we should make more of her. And I agree. We should make more of her because she had an awesome task here. And you'll notice little boys... When they're born into this world, little boys are just little boys. And, and Wynn said it very well. You know, we need help. We, we, we just need help. Mama needed to say the things she said to me because I was just a nodhead kid running around out there. And I'd get into all kinds of things if it wasn't for Mama there telling me how to do what I needed to do. And, you know, boys may grow up to be men. Sometimes they might not grow up to be as manly as maybe somebody else. But I'm going to tell you something. Every little girl, every woman child born is a natural born mama. Think about it for a minute. Little boy's going to go eat dirt. That's what I did. I ate dirt. I mean, we just did what we did. But guess, guess what the little girls do? Even their little children, they got their babies. It's a natural thing. God made a mother. Thank the Lord for that. Thank God for that. My wife is way smarter than I am. I mean, there are a lot of things I can do that maybe she can't do. But when it comes to the brains, I promise you, she's the one you need to talk to because she's got it together. I don't. And I don't know where I'd be without her. <laughs> Absolutely. Turn with me real quickly, and we're going to wind this up to Genesis Chapter 2. The title today, which I didn't tell you in the beginning, the title today was Secondhand Dirt. And I want you to see where that concept came from. I heard someone say, and I can't remember who it was, that that the reason women were so precious was because they were created one step away from the dirt. And I thought, okay, secondhand dirt. That's exactly. You know, heard little boys say and the girls say when they're being children, you know, making little rhymes. Uh, what are boys made of, you know? I don't know, frogs and dirt and what, what was all the, I can't remember that one. 
snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. And, and no, we weren't made of that either. We were probably made of something more lower than that. But, I, you know. And the girls were made of what? Now, we love saying that. But you know what? That's actually not true either. So what were girls made of? Well, we know that Adam, the first man, was created of, now he says very specifically in here, in, John, in, in Genesis 2, verse 7. Look at this quickly. Then the Lord formed man of the dust of the dirt, if you will, from the ground. He wanted to make sure we understood it wasn't just dust collected out of the air. It was dirt from the ground. Actually, in the Hebrew, it was a little bit of the reddish color, so he was kind of a reddish man. He, he was kind of, Adam was kind of reddish color. But the scripture in the Hebrew, when you break all of this down and look, get the sense of it, God created Adam from the dust of the ground, from the dirt of the ground, and he didn't just make a, a form and say, okay, now, here's this body, I'm going to breathe into it. But actually, in the Hebrew, it's the sense of him making it and breathing his breath into him as he was making him. And Adam was called Ish in the Hebrew, Ish. He was the first man. God made him the way he wanted to make him. And he said it's not good. And here's where we get the proof that the women have the brains. Let's look this. Woo. Look at verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be left alone. Would y'all agree with that? <laughs> it's, a, it's not always good for man to be alone. <laughs> in a whole lot of different ways because we're going to get in trouble sooner or later. We're going to do something. Us boys, we're going to do something that's going to get us hurt, you know. And then here comes the girls telling us we shouldn't do that. And they're probably right. We get aggravated at them, but they're right. We shouldn't do that because men do some crazy stuff. But there's a lot of reasons. He made here... He made everything. He said it's not good for him to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable or corresponding to him. Okay? In other words, she'll be like him, but not exactly like him. Okay? He didn't need a bud. Okay? Let me be clear there. I'm not trying to be. Let me be clear. God didn't make another Adam he made an Eve. I'll leave it alone. But it is what it is. Okay. Out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man see what he had called them and whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. And the man gave, verse 20, names all the cattle and all the birds of the sky and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper suitable for him, and God had said, I'm going to do that. So look what happened here. Verse 21, so the Lord caused a deep sleep, God's anesthesia, to fall upon man, upon Adam, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place, and the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Why I say secondhand dirt? Because Adam was made from the dirt. Eve wasn't. That's why she smells better probably. He made him from the dirt and then he made her from him. Now does that make him better than her? Absolutely not. She's different. Praise God. <laughs> Everybody ought to be thinking that. Praise God. <laughs> and I told people, I said, I kind of want to believe that God just kind of grabbed her by the hand one day and pulled her out behind the tree and go, look what I made. And guess what? Adam said, woman. And I think it was more like, whoa, man. 
That's how she kind of got, you know, I know that's not. You, you're not going to be able to prove that, but that's my version of it. Whoa, man. Well, amen to that. <laughs> Whoa, man. She didn't look nothing like the horses and the cows and the kangaroos and all the other things. She's pretty cool. And I got a scar to prove it. She's from secondhand dirt. I think she's a little further from the, the, the ugly and things like that of the world. That's why women are tender. That's why, that's why women are like they are. God made her that way. God didn't do anything by accident. And he says here, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called, Whoa, man, or Isha. Because she was taken out of man. And then he prophesies a little bit. For this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother. He didn't have a father. This is a prophecy. Adam didn't have a father. He didn't have a mother. Eve was going to be the first mother. So he's prophesying here. He's saying, she, A man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and they weren't ashamed because they didn't know any different. Nobody else around say anything. I want you to know God didn't make any mistakes. God did what he did because it's what he wanted to do. And this old world will always be trying to pervert what God made. And I was taught, and I'm sure you were taught, in our early years that the home is the heart of our society. We need, we need daddy. Oh yeah, we need daddy to take us out there and, and do like John Wayne did and throw the kid in the water and teach us how to swim. You know, I mean, that's kind of drastic, but hey, we learn how to swim. Mama's crying, oh, don't do that, don't do that. You know, we need that balance. We need the two, we need both. God never intended, and I'm not, compl I'm not trying to be legalistic with people because I know we have Brady Bunch family, mine's, mine's the same. And I understand that, and I'm not criticizing that. I'm simply saying that God made that balance between mother and father for a reason. And so, there's, it is no accident that the evil one, the enemy of our souls, is trying to tear all of that fundamental from our the fabric of our society. There's a reason for that. He's trying to destroy everything God made. God made that for a purpose. There's a reason. You need the toughness of daddy just as much as you need the tenderness of mama. You need that tenderness of mama just as much as you need that toughness of daddy. And everybody's not exactly the same, and I'm not trying to put everybody in the same bag. I'm simply saying we need what God has made. And we need to understand that that's precious. That's what we need to know. So whatever you do, I think you need to kiss and hug your mama. Just more so, I wish I had mine here today to do that. She's in heaven and I wouldn't bring her back here for nothing. Because I know she's there with Jesus and my daddy. And I know she's happy and I know she wouldn't, as much as she may miss us, she wouldn't want to come back to this earth after being in his presence. But I'll tell you right now, hug your mama while you got her. You know why? Because she made secondhand dirt, not firsthand dirt. Secondhand dirt. She's precious. She's precious. She was made one step further away from that dirt. Let's pray. I'm going to ask one of these men to come. Uh, Brother David, can I borrow you? Stand up here. I'm going to ask you to stand while we sing one verse. We're going to pray. Father, I'm asking you, Lord, today, that if there's any here that doesn't know you as Savior and Lord of their life, that they'd turn loose and let you have full reign. In Jesus' name. If you would come, I'm asking Brother David to be my stand-in so that I won't share my stuff with you.
today. You have a wonderful day with your family, but there's no service tonight here. Next week we will get back into Proverbs on Sunday night. We'll continue on Sunday morning with John. And uh, you have a great and wonderful Mother's Day. Brother Dave, will you dismiss it? <laughs>